My name is Paul Lucky. I'm the founder of Oculus. We're showing off the Rift that's going to be shipping in Q1. We're showing off Oculus Touch. We're showing off a lot of the games that are going to be launching next year. I'm going to buy every single game that launches in the Rift store. So anyone who launches a game, they've got at least one sale from me. I will buy every single one. All of the games are digitally distributed. It's, a, it's, a, it's an order, there's different magnitudes of problem. And the fact that you can't buy a game physically is not the thing that's going to stop people from using VR. If, if there's so many other things. You have to have a PC that's capable of running it. You need to be able to get a rift. You have to you know, be in that scene. I really don't think that people are going to not buy games just because they can't buy it in a store. PC gaming just is, it, it's just a non-factor. Even most retail games that you buy right now, like if I go out and buy uh, Doom retail in a store, inside is just, it's just a Steam key. So it's, it's all digital at the end of the day. So we are going to have a 2D version of the store so that you can buy stuff without having to access in the Rift. But the primary experience has been designed for VR so that you have things like VR previews of games that you're, you know, as, as you're browsing them rather than just having screenshots or videos like, like most, most, most traditional gaming platforms. We'll have more to show it at uh, Oculus Connect. So the thing to remember about Oculus Connect is that it's a developer event. It's primarily for virtual reality developers and content creators who are, if not already in VR, interested in getting into VR. So it's not necessarily, a lot of people imagine that it's some kind of you know, announce a palooza where we're just going to be announcing all kinds of different things. There'll be tons of games announced at Connect, but reality is that we make announcements when we're ready, not when they happen to line up with a show. You know, if, if, if it ends up really close, you know, by a week or so, then sure, we do that. But uh, the goal of Connect isn't to use it as a way to announce things. It's to meet with developers, connect developers, and have a lot of really good talks. That's why we expanded it from two days to three days this year, uh, so that we had more time to have tr different tracks for for different kinds of different kinds of talks and more time for people to hang out. Yeah, I'm not going to make an announcement of an announcement. We don't want to give out. Uh, we're not going to launch pre-orders until we are 100% sure exactly what date we can start shipping on. Uh, you know, we don't want to just. We, we're not going to open pre-orders and just say it'll come sometime in Q1. And so, getting that date finalized, especially because we're not shipping till Q1. You know, we it'll be it'll be later in the year before we know exactly when we're going to be able to ship the Rift. We, we can scale demand up and down. It, it, it's more knowing when the first units are going to come off the line. And you know, we, we know how many we can manufacture at a consistent rate after that. We're already starting to get touches out to some developers in very limited quantities. We're going to be launching pre-orders for both at the same time. What would, be, what would cause real fragmentation would be telling developers to develop for a gamepad for two years and then shipping a totally different gamepad. Like, that, that's how you cause fragmentation between what developers can build and what people actually have the hardware to play. One of the reasons we bundle the gamepad is because developers wanted to know that everyone who buys a Rift already has the hardware to play their game, that they didn't have to go out and buy a separate device. So regardless of what we do with Touch, we are going to continue bundling a traditional gamepad with the Rift so that all those developers can know that everyone is going to have access to their games. Uh, the other thing with Touch is that it doesn't make sense to make everyone bear the burden of a controller set that right now there isn't very much content for. I mean, you're going to see it grow over time, especially as Touch gets closer to launch, but there's going to be a lot less content than we've seen made for gamepads that where they've had years to polish these games and build them out for VR and make them work well. On top of that, there's people who aren't interested in Touch at all, and that's not to say this is everybody, but they if I'm a racing simulator enthusiast, I'm much more interested in buying steering wheels and pedals than Oculus Touch. If I'm a real flight sim or space sim enthusiast, I'm more interested in having a throttle and stick than I am in having touch. So it doesn't make sense to make everybody bear the cost of something that they may not even be interested in. We wanted to give a choice to people. And you know, a gamepad is a much, much more affordable technology than what's in touch. And so it's almost an insignificant cost to bundle it, whereas putting touch in is something where you would have to significantly increase the price of the product. And we'd rather let people make the decision to develop for it or not and to buy it or not. Everything you see in touch has p potential game applications. But you know, Toybox isn't really, uh, sorry, not touch, uh, Toybox. Toybox wasn't designed as a game. It was designed as kind of a test bed to try all kinds of different interactions with guns and explosives and you know, laser pointers and blocks and balls and all these different things. Uh, all of those different interactions, we have ideas for how to build games around them. And some of those are going into games that our developers are already working on.
any software that's designed for touch is probably going to be specifically designed around virtual reality input, around six six DOF input. Uh, you'll probably see some games where there's crossover between traditional controls and 3D controls, but I think it's for the most part they're going to be different sets of games. I mean, sure, I, you you do see this in the console market. I mean, look at what happens, like Connect, for example, one of the best-selling electronic peripherals of all time, and. You know, there's games that require Connect, and then there's games that don't use it at all. And developers choose to make games for either. Um, I don't expect to see as many games made for Touch as for GamePad over the next few years. There's just too many things already in development, and too many game styles that are already very well established for GamePad that don't necessarily benefit from six DOF input. I think it's going to take a similar amount of time for the ecosystem to really flourish around. Six degree of freedom input. I think it's going to take you know a year or two before you start seeing the same volume of content that you see for other input devices. Oculus Share. I, we, I think we talked a little bit about it at at uh, our Step into the Rift event, and we'll be talking about it more at Connect. But yes, Share will continue to exist. The goal is to provide a place for people to share things with people that maybe aren't polished to the point of being a real consumer product or something that they want to that they want to sell yet. Uh, we want to continue providing that for developers so that they can. They can, you know, get their stuff in front of a large audience of people, even if it's just a smaller tech demo type of experience. Because that's where a lot of these games have come from. They've come from tech demos that really got a lot of attention and a lot of polish and a lot of feedback, and now they've grown into full games. We don't want to end that process. We want to continue to support it.